Welcome to Vision, the show about the College of Arts and Sciences. And today we're gonna look internally into the Dean's Office at some of the roles that it does to attract donors and also to work with alumni. I'm joined right now by Sarah Frederick, who is our Director of Development for the College of Arts and Sciences. Yes. Thank you for being here. I'm excited to be here. And if you can tell us to explain the role of a Director of Development. Okay, so I just started in August, so I had to learn myself. What, is, what exactly does that mean? And what does that mean for the college? And what does it mean mm -hmm. university-wide? So basically what I've learned these past 11 months is we have so many new students and faculty and enrollments up. So there's a lot of things changing. And with that change, you need updated technology. You need updated space. You need resources to support these students and faculty so they get the best education and the best experience here on campus. So I work with the College of Arts and Sciences and work with our different departments to see what needs are and how we can go out and work with organizations or individuals and try to get those resources fulfilled so they have the ultimate experience here at Mississippi State. Well explained very well and I think we don't realize about those needs continuing to change and grow as the university grows. Now you were also a student here at Mississippi State. Tell us about your journey coming back to Mississippi State. I was, yeah. I graduated in 2008 with communication major so I'm a College of Arts and Science alum. I'm proud of it. And I also got my master's in business administration here as well. And we left in 2011, went to Flowood and worked there for five years. And it was great and we loved it, but we knew we always wanted to come back home. And this is home for us. Mississippi State has our heart and we're proud to be here and we're proud to represent it. So we got back August 1st. I think we loaded everything up that we had left at the house. July 31st drove in and started August 1st. And I think we've been smiling ever since we've been back. It's a great place to be, isn't it? It is, it is. Now also too, what would you say is the best part of your job? Oh, that's easy, it's the relationships. I knew the relationships with our alumni that was gonna happen, but the relationships with students and faculty and staff throughout campus who really helped me visualize these needs that we have, helped me see the resources and why we need them and updated technology. They work with me and collaborate and they say this is what we could do to really enhance the experience here at Mississippi State. So their passion makes me even more passionate about it to go talk to our alumni. And I love talking with them too. They have great experiences from their past. And, and stories. Their and stories, yeah, I could sit there for hours and it, it turns into that and I don't even realize it. It's so much fun. I mean, that's my, definitely my favorite part is the relationship building with everybody across campus, but the alumni as well and I think only Mississippi State graduates and Mississippi State faculty and staff understand that family atmosphere. Yeah and I hear that word family come up so often and when we think about that family and we think about donors I know I for a long time thought well I don't have enough money to give. Mm -hmm. What do you tell individuals that say well I might not be in a position to give to Mississippi State? There's so many different ways to give you know and with so many new students and things changing and tuition changes so if you can give for a scholarship or just start building towards a scholarship but even hey, a full scholarships great but if you can give a partial if you could help provide any kind of support for a student to lessen that financial burden on them then they can focus on you know studying and being the best student that they can be to better their future so you can start with scholarships big or small i mean you can give like 25 dollars here you could set up through a bank draft or there's there's other avenues too down the road if you want to make a big impact put msu in your state and then one day you know that could turn into something that you wanted to see here change at mississippi state so it's a really good opportunity and we also just want people to stay connected so just come back and give your time. Come talk to students, tell them your experience. Even if you just graduated last year, campus can change so quickly. That's true. And that's the beauty of my job, is that's what I wanna see. I wanna see the growth and the development and the changes. And somebody told me, if you see construction on campus, you know things are changing. Things are, they're putting some they're new growing. things. Yeah. yeah, and you don't want it to always be the same. But they change. But when you come back on campus, you still have that same feel for it and love and passion. Every student, every faculty you walk by, you can still feel it. So, 
And we just have a little time left, but what would you say about that impact when somebody gives to Mississippi State? What it does for them and for the college? The impact, big or small, whether it's you give $25, 25000 25 million, <laughs> or 25 minutes of your time, will make an impact on anybody here at Mississippi State and make them a better person. Thank you so much, Sarah. And we'll be right back. In today's information age, speed and technology drive innovation and economic advantage. At Mississippi State University, our Cray supercomputer is among the fastest academic systems in the world. How fast? Wrap your mind around 593 trillion calculations per second. What can we do with a system like this? What can't we do? When NASA had safety concerns with John Glenn's shuttle mission, they turned to us. When the Navy needed a better submarine, we helped design it. We built a better, safer engine cradle for the Corvette, assisted Homeland Security with cyber strategies, and predicted severe weather patterns for NOAA. We're changing the game for supercomputing while helping protect and shape tomorrow opening up a whole new world of possibilities. Everyone remembers their favorite teddy bear, the reassuring love of their first puppy. They comforted us and made us laugh. For children battling abusive situations or post-traumatic stress disorder, the memories aren't as pleasant. That's why at Mississippi State University, we're pioneering a robotic technology that brings healing to those exposed to traumatic situations. Known as Therabot, MSU's robotic beagle includes lifelike features that allow it to move in ways that are both natural and nurturing. Its ultimate goal? To bridge the gap between two types of effective therapy, using real animals and their plush counterparts for emotional assistance. At MSU, we're proud to be changing the game in therapeutic recovery, even prouder to be putting lives back together again. Welcome back and furthering our discussion about development, we wanna also talk about advancement. And so I'm sitting with the advancement coordinator for the College of Arts and Sciences, Nikki Robinson. Nikki, tell us a little bit about your job in the college. Well, as the Advancement Coordinator, I kind of do an array of things, um, but one of my biggest roles is to support Sarah, who um, you just spoke with, um, while she's traveling, making visits and things like that. Um, I support her on and off the road to um, do a wide variety of things, um, but I also work really closely with scholarships in uh, the College of Arts and Sciences as a whole. I work with the departments to just kind of guide them through the awarding process if they need it. Um, and then also really closely with the scholarships that we have in the Dean's office that we're very blessed to have. Um, so it's good to work with students in that way and um, also planning the scholarship ceremony. I work with the board members um, who advise the college who are um, mostly all of them alumni um, of the college. So uh, that's a great way to make relationships and have you know close contacts for the college. Um, and just a wide variety of things like that. So. Well, tell me about those relationships that you have with students and alumni, and I know also, too, you were very instrumental in something that the college has been doing to celebrate 60 years. Yes. Tell us about that project. Um, so alumni relationships are a, such a neat thing um, that we're grateful to have as part of our job because it's super easy to create a relationship with someone who you're able to connect so easily because you both have a very common interest in the love for Mississippi State. Um, and so through the celebration of our 60th anniversary um, over the past year, we were able to contact an, uh, 60 alumni who were chosen um, through a survey that we sent out to almost 12,000 alumni um, wow. through email, which was a really great way to get back in contact with a lot of alumni who may have not heard from us in a long time or from Mississippi State in general. Mm -hmm. um, but through those surveys that we received back um, and through some other avenues, we chose 60 alumni and have been in the process of writing those stories and releasing them as they um, come out. And we only have a few more left and we are have been doing it for about a year. So it's been really awesome to reconnect to a lot of those alumni. And like I said, a lot of them haven't heard from us in a long time. So it's been 
a neat experience to hear their stories. And well, tell, read. Me, tell me about that response. Yeah, so reading the stories was the most fun part of that experience <laughs> just because a lot of times you don't really get, they p students leave Mississippi State and you don't get to hear their story or where they went or what experiences they have after Mississippi State. Mm -hmm. And you just, it blew us away, the things that our alumni are doing and how amazing they all are. Um, we wish that we could have featured more of them just because they all, they just had the best stories to tell. Um, what were some that stuck out to you? Um, I think one that I remember reading uh, that was super neat, it was uh, a lot of people talked about their families. We asked what their greatest success was. Um, and a lot of people said that their greatest success in life was um, the person who they married or their That's children, neat. which was really neat. And we had one alumni who had a class with um, their spouse who was not their spouse at the time <laughs> um, and he saw her in class and just it was almost like a love at first sight thing and that's just super neat because it was Mississippi State and the classes and the College of Arts and Sciences that brought them together and they've been able to experience life and you know experience life as an alumni of Mississippi State so that was a super neat story to hear. You're right, we don't think about that when people come in. We think about the degree and the education, which is all wonderful, but there's so much more to the Mississippi State experience. It's a personal experience for yeah. each different person. so Which is very neat. I want you to talk a little bit about the scholarship process. You mentioned that um, a little <clears throat> bit ago. And what's the process and what's available to students? How do they know? We actually have a great system that um, the university as a whole has gone to. It's called Academic Works. Um, and for students, it's available through their MyState account on their banner. Um, and it, it's available to all students. It's a great thing that wasn't available when I was in school here. And I wish that it would have been because it's made scholarships just easy, ac easy to access. For everybody, um, right? for, for all students, mm -hmm. um, whether they're undergraduate or graduate students, it's available to them. Uh, and so they, they apply online and the scholarships that are, are available to them specific to their uh, the college that they're in and their major, they ha can see all the scholarships that they can apply for. Uh, and then each college has their you know different uh, process that they do. But for us, it's a scholarship committee, which is a great way to uh, you know be objective to students. And we follow the guidelines for the gift agreements of the private scholarships that donors have given. And that's kind of how we, we go through that process. And um, it's, it's a great way for students to have easy access to scholarships in the college. It's been an awesome thing. Thank you so much. And also too, we will hope that you join us next month on our show Vision for College of Arts and Sciences.